Hi there, kids. Uh, this is the last problem in the lesson 21 through 23 section of the problem set where we have nothing but super complicated uh, questions. And the objective being make sense of complex multi-step problems, which you can't see because it's so tiny and then it goes super blurry because that's fun. Uh, multi-step problems and persevere in solving them, share and critique peer solutions. And there it is, it comes back just in time to do the work. All right, so let's take a look at this. This is kind of a crazy <laughs> problem here. Um, the dimensions of each successive, that means like as they go in a row, blue square pictured to the right are half that of the previous blue square. Of course, nothing's in color, so we would never know. The lower left blue square measures six inches by six inches. So we're gonna take the grayed out shaded area and we're gonna label what we know, which is the six inches by six inches. Okay, now very important information here, the dimensions of each one as it goes doop, doop, doop off up into the corner, they are half the dimensions are half. So if this is six by six, this is three by three. And this one is half of three. So you might think, oh, well, can I cut an odd number in half? Yes, you start getting decimals or mixed numbers. So you could say this is 1.5 inches, or you could say it's one and a half, because one and a half plus one and a half would be the two holes right here, and then the two halves would make one. So it would be one and one and one. So that'd be three. So what's half of 1.5? Then you might have to start doing uh, half of three halves, and you'll find out that it's 0 0.75, 0 0.75 or three fourths, okay? And so that's for this one, and we have yet another one, and we need half of three-fourths in order to find our measurement for the dimensions here. And when you multiply, you're gonna get three-eighths. And so for that little square there, it's gonna be three-eighths for each side. So go ahead and label each little square. Now, we have to find multiple things here. First of all, the area of the shaded part. So what they mean is the area of all the shaded pieces. So let's take a look at all the questions and then I want to show you something important. B says find the total area of the shaded and unshaded parts. And then C says what fraction of the figure is shaded. So let's look at this and start with C. You might think it looks like a big square, but in fact, if you zoom in on this last little chunk here, there actually isn't anything. So the design of this figure is this shape, because this is then repeated here, which is repeated here, which is repeated here, which is repeated here. So it's not a box of four squares in a figure, it's only three. And so that's where we're gonna start. We're gonna actually answer C, and we're gonna say one third of the figure is shaded. And now that you recognize that it's only one third that's shaded, now we can figure out what the shaded part is. So we do have to do kind of some big calculating. So let's get started uh, with A. So in order, <laughs> not number nine, A, there we go. So in order to start, we're gonna do, of course, area equals length times width, which you're never gonna forget because you write it every time we talk about it. It's gonna be a six times six for the big square, but we also have to combine that with the area of the next square, which is a three by three. Combine that with the area of the next square. So let's do a 1.5 times 1.5. Oops, I'm gonna use a dot. And combine that with 
Uh, I'm going to change it to fractions because I'm going to use fractions for the last two. So we'll do 3 fourths times 3 fourths plus 3 eighths times 3 eighths. Okay, and let's start solving. 6 times 6, 36. 3 times 3. Now if I have 1.5 times 1.5, let's take that and go 3 halves times 3 halves equals 9 fourths. And 9 fourths would be 2 and 1 fourth. And then this 3 fourths times 3 fourths, we can just put 9 sixteenths. And then 3 eighths times 3 eighths, there's no cross canceling, and so it's going to be 9 sixty fourths. Now we have some combining to do, so let's put our whole numbers together. 36 plus 9 is not 46, it's 45. 46, 47. And then put all your fractions together um, with our different denominators. Now when adding fractions, you have to have a common denominator. So I'm going to look at 4 and 16 real quickly. I'm going to do these two first. So I'll change this to 4 sixteenths. Okay, so if I want to get from 4 to 16, it's times 4 and then times 4. Okay, so this problem here, I'm just doing it by itself. So move this down and then we have to combine it with 9 sixty fourths. So 16 when multiplied can make 64. Um, let's move that off over here and I want it to equal 60 fourths. Okay so think about what you multiply by 6 in order to get a 4 and that would be a 4. So if I go times 4 fourths double check, 6 times 4 is 24, carry the 2, 4 times 1 is 4 plus 2 is 6. Yep, 4 is my scale factor. So 4 times 3 is 12, carry the 1, 4 times 1 is 4 plus 1 is 5. So that's my new uh, fraction to have an equivalent uh, common denominator. 52 60 fourths and 9 60 fourths. So I'm going to leave a little bit of room for part B, so I'm going to go this way. And 52 plus 9 and so we don't even need the little plus. And that is 4 inches squared for the shaded area. Okay, so that is your answer for part A. So lots and lots of work here. So now we have A and C done, and then we just need to solve part B. So find the total area of the shaded and unshaded parts. So with our picture being what it is, it's not gonna be multiplied by four. You're gonna multiply by three. This is taken care of, but everything we found out for this, we need to multiply it by three because it has to be here and here, and it also has to be here and here, and it has to be here and here. So each one of these we found needs to be multiplied three times. So take your 47 and 61 60 fourths. We're gonna multiply that by three, which means it's 47 times three and 61 60 fourths times 3. Okay, so we're going to take each one apart so that this is times this and this is times that. Okay, so 7 times 3 is 21, 12, 13, 14. And uh, nothing can be cross canceled because 63 would be a multiple of 3 because 6 and 3 are multiples of 3, but 64 would not work. So let's just multiply it straight away. 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 6 is 18 for the top. 64 times 1 is 64. And we need to get this to be simplified. It's an improper fraction. Kind of an odd looking problem, so let's just lay that out. How many times can I fit 64 
into 183. And if I had two, it would be around 120 something. But if I had three, it would be bigger than, it, it'd be nice if I had 60, it'd be 180, but I don't. I have four more than that three times. So we're gonna go with two. Two times four is eight. 12, now we have a big subtraction problem. And you can uh, borrow and regroup. And we have five and then five, and this is less than that. So two and 55. 60 fourths plus 141 because you just bring that right down and then combine that 143 and 55 60 fourths inches squared total area shaded and unshaded and so now you have all three parts a b and C. So hopefully that's not too crooked. I'll straighten that out to have a good shot at that. And that is the only problem we're doing on today's video because it's the last one for the problem set for lessons 21 through 23. So I hope it's helpful. Click subscribe, come back again. I still have a few more lessons to do in the book, even though I may not actually get to all of them with my students. You can uh, you can work on them over the summer. Keep your book if you want to be ready for sixth grade. A lot of the stuff at the end really is kind of looking ahead to sixth grade stuff, which I never really have time for. So hopefully I can do a few more videos. You guys take care and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.